Okay, so we're going to cover reservoir routing um, and detention routing in this segment. And so essentially reservoir routing and detention routing are going to use the exact same concepts, whether it's a water supply reservoir or a combination or you're doing detention routing. Um, we'll talk about tail water and then also about the outfall um, structures and spillways. And then um, you'll have the opportunity to go through a, a few hands-on workshops. Okay, so why do you want to do reservoir routing? Basically, you're taking flows coming in, whether it's one or more hydrographs. You're routing the uh, you're routing the hydrograph through the reservoir and determining the routed outflow hydrograph. Just like stream routing, um, you expect to see an attenuation or dampening of the peak and also a lagging of the hydrograph. And we generally um, would expect to see much more of that through a reservoir or detention basin than in a stream, although there can be. Um, significant attenuation and lagging in a stream just depending on how long it is. Um, you know, if you're looking at like the Colorado River or something or, or the you know Mississippi River that's huge, of course you're going to see a lot of that. All right, so the reservoir um, element um, can be defined by um, there's older methods from HEC-1 where you can use um, elevation storage discharge curves and these are basically calculations that were done outside of the model that just um, tells the model specifically at this elevation this is the storage and this is the discharge um, that's occurring. Um, but we also um, in the current version have the option to just put in an elevation volume relationship and there are now um, outfall um, structures. Uh, that can be incorporated. So you have outlets, which can be an orifice opening, or it can be like a pipe or culvert. Uh, you can also do a spillway um, or a dam top. So the spillway um, might reflect if you have like a, a weir um, for your high 100 year discharge, or it might reflect um, maybe you want to model an overflow um, from the basin. Uh, if, if you need to model pumps, you can model pumps in here. And it's also um, the culverts um, are similar to what's in HECRAS, so you have a lot of different options um, with those. Um, so again, reservoir routing, you've got your inflow hydrograph in blue. Uh, it gets routed, um, peak gets dampened, it gets um, squished a little bit and shifted in time. So the reservoir routing uses the modified pulse routing, which we talked about for stream flow. Uh, also uses conservation of mass or the continuity um, equation. Um, so input data, this, the input data is exactly the same as you'd use in any other detention model, whether it be ICPR, SWIM, PONPAC, um, any model that's out there. Um, you need to know you'd like your starting water surface elevation. Um, you need your storage volume available, your elevation volume or elevation area relationship, what do you, what do you think your pipes need to look like, um, the inflow hydrograph uh, into the system. And you can do the reservoir routing. Um, it can be set up within a watershed model where um, you actually um, divert flows out of the stream into the reservoir, or it can be a very simple, maybe you have a 10 acre site that's going to drain into the detention basin. Um, and that's all that's in the model, um, and you're simply using it to route the hydrograph. Yeah, so there's some, um, we'll touch briefly later on today, there's some um, dam break um, options, and then tailwater conditions um, if needed, and we'll talk about those. Um, so the reservoir data or detention basin data gets entered with paired data in terms of like the um, uh, elevation um, storage relationship or any storage discharge relationship. If you're entering um, fixed tailwater, it just gets incorporated right in the detention basin or reservoir data. If you're going to use like a stage or tailwater hydrograph, that is um, time based, so it goes in time series. Yeah, and so we talked about average end area method versus conic uh, approximation method. Uh, versus you can calculate volumes with the tin. Um, so we're basically looking for an elevation volume relationship you know, throughout the basin. If it's pretty uniform, uh, you could just end up with you know, a kind of a zero storage elevation, you know, an elevation maybe at the toe of slope, 
and then at your um, design water surface and then like top of the bank. If it's not completely uniform, you might want um, steps uh, in between. So usually half foot or foot uh, type uh, increments. So average end area method just basically takes the um, incremental volume as, as an average uh, of the area uh, between those two slices um, times the height differential between the two. So if we have um, an area at elevation 10 is 2.16 acres, and an area at elevation 11 is 2.76 acres, we take an average of that to be 2.46 acres times a half a foot. Uh, so like 1.23 acre feet. Uh, the conic approximation method, um, basic same variables, but a little, little bit more detailed formula. And this is going to be a more accurate um, representation. But in this case, it gives us the exact same value. Uh, so our stage storage data, um, I'm sure you've seen these, but basically different elevations. What's the surface area? What's the incremental volume? And then what's the total volume? And I always like to check um, the graphs in HMS just because if something got off and copying and pasting or entering data, that's going to just show you visually um, that it looks good. Okay, so um, with detention routing, I mean, obviously the point of detention is that we're trying to meet some maximum allowable discharge. Um, usually the existing conditions peak flows from the site. Um, maybe different criteria if you're um, required to over uh, over detain or you know meet lower um, peak flow rates. Um, but basically, it's it's just a temporary place to store water. Uh, people want to know sometimes what's the difference between detention and re retention. So basically, if you've got a high school kid and they get in trouble at school, they go to detention. If they get in trouble with the law, they go to the big house. They're in retention and they're not getting out. So that's our difference. Eventually they'll get out, just like eventually the water leaves the retention system. So uh, again, you know, just looking at conceptual triangu triangular hydrographs, our peak flow before detention in blue, and then after um, we route through the basin, um, that's dampened and the hydrograph shifts, but the volume uh, remains constant, unless you have an infiltration uh, feature built into the detention. Um, so there's various types of detention basins, um, inline, which is basically right in the stream, um, off stream, which is basically kind of an individual detention basin, on stream, maybe di diverting flows out of the um, channel or stream into the detention basin. Um, so you've got dry basins, you've got amenity basins with wet bottoms, um, you've got, you can put wetlands in there, soccer fields, um, you know, pretty much a lot of different options. Um, we're working with the City of Houston right now on multi-use um, detention criteria um, for their CIP projects. And I guess it's not really criteria, it's more of like a planning guidance document of what um, the designers should consider. Okay, so off-stream has basically direct flow into and out of the basin. On-stream might have direct flow into the basin, but it's also diverting flows out of the stream. Uh, inline um, basically widens out um, the stream and provides detention within there. Uh, if you're working in Harris County, there's only very specific circumstances where inline detention is allowable, and that is generally you're at the upper end of the watershed. Um, all landowners have been accommodated, so there, there's like a set of criteria. Uh, maximum allowable discharge, again, usually that's existing conditions, but it may be something smaller depending on the uh, local criteria. Um, so tailwater, um, if you're using a method where you put in like elevation storage um, discharge, which we'll do for one of the uh, reservoir routing workshops, um, the tailwater condition becomes less important. But if you're um, doing detention routing and um, you've got a condition where you do have some backwater or some outlet control, then you want to think about the tailwater. 
Um, so assume none means free discharge. So usually that's in areas with some topographic relief where there's um, elevation difference between the basin and the um, receiving stream or just the receiving stream is very slow um, to rise and the detention basin fills up and drains out before the stream actually um, fills up. Uh, in that case, you have inlet control. Um, so you've got you know, different options you can select. Specified stage is basically um, a stage hydrograph. Uh, fixed stage is a fixed tailwater. Um, downstream discharge is going to be more um, for reservoir or um, pumps uh, situations. Uh, so if you are using fixed tailwater, um, you know, there's some limitations which we'll talk about, but some common uh, places to set it are the top of the outfall pipe, uh, constant depth below the design water surface. Uh, you might be routing for a 100-year event. You might set the tailwater at the 10-year event. Um, you can look at, uh, this is, a, uh, I believe, a text stop methodology, frequencies of coincidental occurrence. But it's basically constant over time, which is not generally realistic unless you're discharging to some fixed level feature. Um, so the drawback of it is if you assume it too, too high, then your outfall structure may be unusually large. And in reality, the discharge may exceed um, the allowable in real life. If you assume it's too low, then you might undersize your outfall structure and um, the volume uh, in reality may not um, be adequate. Uh, stage hydrograph is the most um, realistic in terms of depicting what happens in the watershed. We don't always have data um, for it, so there are some, some workarounds. It correlates with design storm events, which means if you're going to um, put the uh, hydrograph into a watershed impacts model in HEC HMS or other model, then you've got apples and apples um, to compare. Uh, you can also use rating curves um, for tailwater conditions in some models. Um, so, you know, basically, um, you can see what the stage hydrograph versus, you know, where do you choose that fixed tailwater in this instance. Um, wherever you put it, it's not quite um, representative. And the fixed tailwater is very standard in terms of like storm drain um, design. So to develop a stage hydrograph, you basically take your runoff hydrograph near the outfall location in the stream, you combine it with your rating curve, and you get your stage hydrograph. The way you combine it is you relate um, flow with flow, and then are able to get the corresponding time and stage values. So if we um, run a HECRAS model, multi-profile, and you can just do like the FEMA model and have those events, um, but it doesn't provide a lot of definition, especially in the lower, lower portions of the rating curve. So it's sometimes helpful to take the 100-year event and do like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, and so forth percent of that, um, up to a little bit above the 100-year event. Uh, and then we can look at the HECRAS results and pull out the rating curve, which uh, again is flow and water surface elevation. Um, the zero um, point would be the flow line uh, or the bottom of the receiving stream. Uh, so our rating curve looks something like this. If we just ran the FEMA events, we'd have the zero point, we'd have um, like a 100-year point, and then we'd have like a 50 and maybe a 10-year point. So you'd lose definition in here. It'd end up just being like a straight line. So I prefer to do the um, percentages of the 100 year. Um, so yeah, you can put this in a spreadsheet and you've got flow and water surface elevation um, from your rating curve and then time and flow uh, came from your runoff um, hydrograph in the stream. So tailwater hydrographs, um, you know, this, this stays high for a very long time. It's obviously kind of a very flat Maybe, maybe undeveloped, but definitely flat, flood, flat area, really um, wide uh, floodplains. Um, stage discharge um, data, uh, this is sometimes used. Um, again, you'd, you'd have this calculated. You're basically just telling the model, use these values. 
uh, instead of letting it calculate um, based on the pipes. Okay, outfalls and spillways, um, this definitely can relate to dams, but it also can relate to just like if you have um, stacked pipes or a pipe below a trapezoidal weir, uh, or you have a weir uh, in your outfall system. Uh, so it's basically using the weir flow e equation, and there's just you just need the width, um, the elevation, and the coefficient. Uh, for a rectangular weir, pretty simple formula. Uh, the weir coefficient for a rectangular would be somewhere between two and a half and three point three. Uh, so you just compute um, the flow based on the height of water above the weir crest, and then you look at the, um, the length. Uh, OG spillway is more of a um, sharper um, weir. Um, again, you also need um, the same variables um, to go into the model. Um, Low-level outlets, so these um, in HEC HMS now, it can be like a culvert, um, so you choose shapes. Uh, and other information, or it can be an orifice um, opening. Uh, here we have a multi-frequency structure. So if these are culverts, they would go in as culverts, and the um, trapezoidal weir would go in um, as a spillway. Uh, HEC HMS, so this is a screen, this is out of uh, HEC Rouse on Steady Flow. HEC HMS doesn't really have the capability to customize. Um, and if you zoom in, that's not quite as sharp of a point as, as it looks like. But HEC HMS can't really customize like some of the other detention routing uh, models. So our orifice equation um, is going to use um, the coefficient of discharge of um, 0.6 if it's just a um, basically a hole. And the area of the opening, so this is important in entering the data. Um, it's not um, diameter, it's, it's the area. So if it's fully submerged, it's basically um, the head differential is on the upstream or detention side versus the downstream or receiving stream side. If it's um, not um, fully submerged, then it's the difference between the water surface on the detention side and the centroid of the orifice. So HEC HMS will analyze both inlet and outlet control. So you have inlet control when you essentially have like free discharge. Um, and you have outlet control when it's um, more backwater um, controlled. And you might have a combination um, during a given storm event. So you basically need the same information for the culverts that you would use like in HECRAS. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to the um, workshops.